Welcome to episode 136 of For the Love of Guns. Today, we're gonna to talk about 3D printing for the gun people. Now, this is gonna be a challenging episode for some platforms, but we're gonna have some fun with this. I've got my friend Flying Rich on, and he 3D printed a Steyr Aug. Really, really cool looking gun. That now you can, well, work at home if you have the right equipment. Now, I love Falco holsters. The reason why I love them is because they can make a holster for any gun, every budget, without sacrificing quality. Now, realize you can get holsters anywhere, but can you get an affordable, handmade custom holder built to your specs and still not break the bank? Probably not. Definitely go check out Falco holsters. I have a link down below and use the checkout code Banshee to save yourself 10%. Now, I don't know if you've been checking out the ammo market lately, but things are getting real out there. Definitely time to do an inventory of your ammo and see what you've got and what you need. Now, you can buy from anywhere, but you definitely want to consider buying from Ammo Squared. The reason why is you can store your ammo there. And then when you need it, you can you know, get your order shipped to you. Or what happens if you do have some ammo and you go, hmm, I've got a lot of 45, but I need more nine millimeter. Well, the ammo squared at your, your account out there, you can go, hey, take this 45 and turn it into nine millimeter for me and then pull it out. Definitely a really cool concept. I have a link down below, go check them out. Now let's talk to Rich. Rich, tell me about your love of guns. Uh, yeah, I go by Flying Rich. My name is Richard Hughes. I'm a refugee from New York living here in Palm Beach, but not the Palm Beach you think about. I live in Jupiter Farms, where all the rednecks in Palm Beach live, and we can actually shoot in our backyard. So the and cool you actually thing, do. <laughs> and I do on a regular basis. And what I do, my neighbors call me up. They're like, hey, what are you shooting? Can I come over? But that's literally what happens here. I, it's like, thank God, I am so blessed. Uh, but I want to hit with my pronouns, Star-Lord, Savior of the Universe, Ultra Maga, and Squadron Leader. So we, we just got that out of the way. <laughs> and I usually tell people I'm a car guy, motorhead, techie geek that likes guns. And you, know, you and I both are in the in tech fields for yep. day gig. But... I, I think the culmination of of tech in guns, you know, first off, guns is all physics, and I love physics. Yes. Um, but the ability to 3D print guns at home, like, totally geeks me out. And Yeah. Okay. And that's the thing is you've, you've done some things. And, and that's so funny. That for everybody on the audio side, you can't see this, but he is actually holding up a an a Steyr Aug that he 3D printed. And damn, does that thing look good? You, I mean, you you just wouldn't know that that's 3D printed right there. Oh no, no, yeah. So it's it's carbon fiber nylon. There, there's a couple of you know gotchas on it. So, um, the Aug. It, so I was in the beta project. I was just printing stuff. I wasn't really contributing back to the project. There's a few things, uh, you know, once they released it, I realized some things needed tweaking and I have, you know, released back uh, there some jigs and stuff like that. Um, the org project. So hold on. Where, where is it? Right here. So on sale, this, what I call the Stormtrooper org, from PSA is $1,400 on sale. Uh, this is also the NATO AUG because it takes AR-15 mags. Okay. The AUGs, the AUG that I just showed you is a Malaysian AUG and it's a Malaysian military AUG. So it's a demilled parts kit and you typically can find them for under $200. Nice. The, they're they're kind of beat up, so you. Oh, and, and I'm a lefty, so the AUG uh, without does, does this one have it? Yes, I can shoot a right-handed AUG, but the casings are like hitting this and like whipping past your face. Yeah, they're right now, in front of your eyes. 
I, I am still mad at Tim from Military Arms Channel because he's a fully mustached individual. And when he did a review of an AUG, he shot it left, and the casings hit his upper lip, which was protected by a mustache, and continued <laughs> on. I shot one twice, the first time I ever shot an AUG, and it left two crescent-shaped cuts in my upper lip. Nice. <laughs> so, let's see. Um, what, these, these are a little tough to take apart. So, first off, the, the big deal, what people figured out is on the AUG, um, you get the parts kit for about 200 bucks. You can get the barrel for about 150 bucks plus shipping. And then it's your filament and some miscellaneous hardware. What what the 3D printed AUG deletes as a feature, which I, I really don't consider a feature because I'm not in the military trenches. Let's see, do I have to, sorry, bolt forward. So this little mushroom looks looks like the uh, whatever on a uh, on a stick for like a helicopter. Let's see, am I not doing that right? Yes, right here. You can quick change the barrel. So this is, you can put a light machine gun barrel, you can put a 24 inch barrel, you can put this, you know, 16 inch barrel in. So that's like the, you know, nutty big feature on the old. But realistically, the latch over here, this is the receiver and barrel assembly. Okay. So you could theoretically have a nine mil or a 300 blackout and just drop just it slide in. it right on. So with the AUG parts kit, what you get is a barrel stub in the gas block here. Now, the gas block is hardened metal steel tubing welded together, some ports drilled in it and all that. But what you don't get is the barrel in this part. And let me just slap this together correctly. Okay, and let me grab one of these logs. So I I actually set this up left and right-handed so I can dual wield an AUG. So this is Beautiful so screen. this is all 3D printed. The this is an AR15 barrel-ish. So you can see uh, the, the barrel extension right here, and I'll explain yep. that in a second. That's so this is the trunnion. This is the uh, one part of the receiver. This is the third part of the receiver, and then a rail. Even printed the charging handle here, and uh, that's all carbon fiber nylon, and it was printed on a bamboo P1P, and, and that's the whole Scoopy Doo. So what smarter people than me figured out is the you can't buy an AUG receiver. And if you can, it's stupid expensive. So it negates the 3D printable or home gunsmithing part. But they realized the bolt, oh, yeah, let me show you what a bolt looks like. The bolt is almost an AR-15 bolt. Oh, wow. Okay. So if you look at that, that's pretty recognizable. Oh, yeah. The only difference is the bolt is taller. I, I don't know the exact dimensions. So basically, if you shim out with some you know, thin washers, the barrel extension on an AR-15, this bolt will lock up. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So what now, if you take a look at this, this will make sense. So. That, that's basically an AR-15 uh, barrel extension, yep. AR-15 barrel. So you can see that that's right, the ridge yep. that would yeah, lock that's it. A, that's that shoulder even, right there at the, at the barrel. Yep. And the pin. And there's the pin. There's the indexing pin. Yep. And they profiled the barrel and they drilled the gas port for here because the gas port goes in right here. So pretty much exactly like an AR-15, just things done in different places and just a different profile. So that that's interesting looking at it. And that's the one thing about the 3D community. So anybody that's out there that's thinking about this stuff, you know, Rich was talking about this project. 
there really is a community out there. Because, I mean, back when I first started 3D mm -hmm. printing uh, four, almost five years ago, um, you know, it was kind of easy to get into some of these communities because there wasn't that many people. Sure. Now it's pretty, it, it's pretty tight. Things are held mm -hmm. pretty close to the chest until something gets um, released. But there is a whole community of people that are like, okay, I've got this idea. I've got this design. It goes mm -hmm. out to alpha testing and people are testing out like you were doing in beta testing and then it gets released. There's a lot of thought that goes through this. Like this is not like, I'm just going to, I just want to, I just want to print a gun out. There is actual engineering going into this stuff. Oh yeah. 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 I, I, mean, I think there's a lot of wicked smart stuff that I had nothing to do with on this project that went into making it. Um, I'm, I'm going to do like the BASF commercial. Uh, there were some things I saw that could be done better. And so I made the thing that you have better. Yep. Uh, so yeah. that, that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm excited about, uh, my contributions. Uh, cause one of the things was you have to drill and thread and put a little grub screw here into uh the gas block now this gas block is hard and steel it's with a really yeah. good drill bit you can get through it easy with the harbor freight drill index you're going to break a bit um and the jig was designed for you to drill through here well the problem when you drill on the od the bit wants to walk and it'll go this yeah. way also what i did is i reworked the jig and i have a plug that goes into where the barrel is and it keeps the bit from walking up and down and now you can drill straight through because what this is pre-dimpled right here so if this hole is off your gas port on the other side 180 it's degrees off. away is off yeah. i'd almost rather that not have been dimpled because the barrel material is softer than the steel on the gas block so God. there there's a couple of things i would have done slightly different uh but i didn't have input this is a kk barrel uh kk is doing a 300 blackout barrel uh i think there's going to be a nine mil barrel also nice but very nice. very cool stuff also actually so part of the d-mill process is you get a fully automatic trigger pack and you need to print a trigger pack uh, that's a semi-auto trigger pack, or you could modify your full auto trigger pack. Uh, the, the, you're minus the area here where the pins would go in, and in the receiver you have to put, um, what, what, the, what is it called? Oh, it's a stupid term. But basically it prevents you from dropping at a full auto pack because you have uh, defeats, denials. That's it, denials. Denial. So yeah. the denial is like a little block. And that's another modification I did. I 3D printed the parts uh, instead so, of using key stock. Because, I mean, and that's the thing about where we take full, there there are kits of full autos that have been demilled. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm thinking right off the top of my head, I'm thinking the 1919, the Browning 1919. Sure. Uh, it's the right side plate is the serialized part. That's mm -hmm. also where the full auto is. You know, I put a denial island in there to make it a semi-auto. Right. I mean, this is not uncommon. It's the same thing with like, you know, if you think about the uh, the difference of an AR-15 receiver and, a, and an M16 receiver or mm -hmm. an M4 mm -hmm. receiver. You know, we have the shelf in the back Correct. to keep us from putting parts into it. That's basically the mm -hmm. denial in the AR-15. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it, it's kind of interesting seeing that we're taking uh, yet another gun that we have a full auto kit to put right. into a semi auto to make this this thing. It, it's kind of cool to hear that. Yeah, yeah, it's um, you know, it breaks your heart to you. It's like this is a machine. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I uh, kind well, of breaks your heart to, you know, smash it to bits and, you know, put in a semi-auto trigger pack. But, you know, that that's what us mere mortals got to deal with. Yeah. Um, the the trigger pack, which is this one I can pull the trigger pack out of easy. So the trigger pack is almost identical to a PS90. Okay. And so... This this is what, what the trigger pack, so your auto sear was up here, 
and, and that's what's removed in it. So the bars push, there's parallel trigger bars, except on the NATO, there's a single bar. So the bar pushes right here and it pulls back. And while that's back, you can be holding it back. That's, that's what catches it. So yeah. this is one of the 3D printed parts. I, I hate to say it, while I understand the trigger, I don't know all the names. I don't know if that's a sear or disconnect sure. or whatever. But but you had to, it looks like it would be more of a disconnector like in the right. AR. Yeah. So that that's what you printed because on the full auto, there's a ratcheting mechanism so you can do a three round burst just, or full auto. Just like the M yeah, just like the M4. Yeah. But the three round burst, there's a slit in the bottom here and a lever that you move. So you actually have to pull the trigger pack out to go from full auto to three round burst. And it's funny, I didn't know what the hell this was. This is the last round bolt hold open. <laughs> I, I'm like, That's what funny. the hell is that? Yeah, you've got this weird hook just hanging out there. So, yeah, on yeah. an AUG, what is what is the serialized part of the AUG? Uh, it's on the receiver. So, so the receiver that that's part of the barrel assembly. Okay, because that's what I'm trying to get to. You get the AUG is such a unique oh. design. Oh yeah, Rich did it now. He broke. He he broke it. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I'm actually no, doing thing this is, wrong. Do, no, doing everything on camera while you're being interviewed is going to be hard. Because <laughs> um, everything's so different. You know, you know, this gun is the lower, this gun's the upper, but the August oh. got just this odd design. It's just like, okay, where, where is this part? So how much, when you get this kit, how much of this, how much of this is 3D printed? So just... It's just the stock? It's basically just the stock and then... No, no, no. Um, well, the stock, the, the, the stock, this is the OG original stock. You get that in the parts okay. kit. The only thing that's printed... I don't know if i got any of the parts around here. He just, he just point to it on the gun. Yeah, well, this part is the 3D printed part. Okay. So uh, let's see. Is this the one that comes apart easy? So I'll, I'll pull both apart and show you so you can see the difference. So everything from here up is 3D printed. Okay. A and the rail is 3D printed. But I'm talking to Safety Harbor Firearms. They, they may be uh, machining a rail for this. Oh, that's and cool. And let me grab the store-bought log. And, and it's interesting um, now that I have, you know, the semi-auto org and the number of denials that are in it. So you can see what you CNC see the metal yep. machined, yeah. And this yep. is just plastic that I printed. And somewhere, oh yeah, the serial number is right. You can't see it's blocked by the flashlight, but the serial number is right here. Okay. So, and that's what's kind of funny is you, you hear a lot of politicians like, oh my God, we, they're printing these guns and they're not going to, you get this plastic gun that's going to go through metal detectors and they don't realize that, hey, there's metal to these things, right? I mean, I, maybe one what, day. What is it the from point, Die Hard the Glock 7? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, you know, it takes me back to the 80s. Where everybody, everybody was all up in arms about the Glock. This is this undetectable plastic gun. It's like, well, you still have the metal slide, the metal barrel, the rails. There's these metal things that go into a mag called bullets. Uh, you're not just going to walk through a metal hey, detector with these things. Well, and that's that's the interesting thing. It's it's amazing um the amount of propaganda people accept as truth in that you know because some talking head on the box says something that ev everybody believes it and that's the terrifying thing i mean i i'm a florida resident i have a ccw i've thought about getting you know an ffl sot and maybe fel i figure all that stuff would be fun if if i had a commercial business office that I did my yeah. day gig out of, 
I, I would do it, but I, I don't want to invite the devil into my own home. And, and that's the thing is, you know, when I was in FFL, because I was in FFL for 10 years, I was a type one. People would ask me like, oh, you need to get an SOT and, and a manufacturing license. I'm like, hey, if you give me a commercial space out mm -hmm. of my mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. and pay for all these fees because you want it to get yeah. this stuff. Well, it doesn't make any sense to me for you buying one thing. Right. Um, you got to pay right. for this every year. I'll do it. But that's the thing is having an, having an FFL tied to your house there are certain things that you give up, mm -hmm. right? Because my entire property became eligible for ATF inspection. Right. right. Everything. Um, now, if I get, when I'm a type one, my inspections are a little different than now when I get an SOT, it's a completely different type of inspection. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's, mm -hmm. you're basically starting to get into the body cavity search type of inspection right having that tied to your house now the ffl that i do all my transfers from now that i don't have mine um he has it tied to his house he's fine with it that's great if it's good if right. that's good for you go for it for me no um I, that yeah, would have I, to be somewhere i else. just don't want to have my family involved with that basically right, right. And god help you if you have a dog i do Oh, wow. Did I, did I say that out loud? Uh, yeah. Small <laughs> um, dog. So, um, so now with this stuff, what did you use to print this stuff? Because like for me, I started off in the Ender 3. Uh, I still have my Ender 3. I'm looking at it right down there. Um, can you do this with an Ender 3? Or, I mean, talk to me a little bit about the hardware. Yeah, okay. I mean, um, it, the Ender 3 you, is a tough machine to work with. So. I, I'm going to give you my Ender 3 speech in a moment. Okay. Uh, I started 3D printing with an ANET A8, so that's kind of okay. OG 3D printing. And th this is a printer where you assemble every nut and bolt. It takes about eight hours to assemble. So when something broke on it, I was like, oh, I know exactly how to fix it. Right. Well, when a thermistor went on my Ender 3, because there's like four bolts you screw together on an Ender 3 to make it I, work. I've, I've had to replace mine. Yeah. I, I was like, how do I do a thermistor on this? Because I didn't build it. You know, meanwhile, yeah. I've had intimate experience with very similar 3D printer. And that's what I, so we're, we're going to talk, I, I don't know if gun people know open source versus closed source and all that bit. So the Ender 3 is all open source. A lot of printers are all open source. So if you break apart, like on my Bamboo P1P that I'm printing all this stuff on, and I like the fan cover on the hot end. I had to wait for them to send me one. Now, if it was an Ender 3 and I had another printer, I could just download the STL the and print one. the part yeah. and be back in business. So that I, I have a couple of beefs with the Bamboo P1P. So let, let's talk, you know, P1P versus Bamboo. Uh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Bamboo P1P versus Ender 3. <laughs> the Ender 3, I would you could get for $100, $200, um, yep. depending on model and sales and stuff like that. And then I would throw a webcam on it. I would throw a Raspberry Pi on it. I'd be running Which I did. Yes. I would have stuff I did. <laughs> a Docker installation of Spaghetti Detective because I'm all about security. Nothing leaves my network. My home automation system and cameras are all like homegrown and rolled my own. Don't talk to the outside world. Blah blah blah. I can give you the yeah. whole speech. Well, yeah, and, and I'm in cyber, so I know that speech. <laughs> yes. So. It was cool because I could like VPN into my home network from my phone. I could start a print from my phone anywhere in the world there's an internet connection, watch the print as it's printing, and, and I would actually have push bullets set up so I would get notification on my watch with a picture of the print when it finished on my Ender 3. So I was like deep into it. So Ender 3 is like there's a lot of tuning to get a good print. Also, you got to realize the competitor to the Ender 3 is the uh, Prusa. And the Prusa was more expensive. And I was like, you, 
you'll never get $400 out of me for a Prusa. Meanwhile, I'm spending, you know, $700 for a P1P and I would do it again yeah. in a heartbeat. And I'll, so the Prusa was a step up from the Ender 3. It was open source, all that bit. They used higher quality everything in it. And that's why it cost more. But right. the result wasn't crazy better for for what you got. And and that's why I was like, all right, the money, the ROI on your money is most effective on an Ender 3. You just have to tune the F out of it and be an expert on it. So what I tell people is don't buy an Ender 3, get a bamboo, P1P, or carbon, because it's like being an expert on carburetors, you know, single barrel, dual barrel, six packs, quadrajets, holly double pumpers, in in uh, you know points condensers and rotors for ignition systems, and then one day somebody says, "Oh, by the way, we're going coil over plug electronic ignition system and direct injection for fuel injection on the car." All of the knowledge you have about that stuff is now worthless. It's now done. Yeah, because the yeah. bamboo P one P is like the Apple of three D printers. The so the thing that I, I love, don't like. About I like how it, you put that. I like how you put that. It's the Apple 3D printers. Yes. Yes. It literally is the PhD, push your dummy. Uh, like I've often said, I'm the monkey that pushes print on the keyboard, you know, for 3D yeah. printing. Uh, that literally, I had not thought 3D printing would evolve to the state for another five or six years. Uh, but Bamboo has proven me wrong. And, and so much so, I actually... Price. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, you can get it for like, you know, either six ninety nine or five ninety nine, depending if they have a sale or so. Uh, I would get the P one S with the camera and the lights and whatever else, the the higher version of the P one P. It's it's a great printer, and so rolling back to the question that got us into this discussion is, can you print that with an Ender three? And the answer would be yes, with a bunch of modifications. Um, carbon fiber nylon is abrasive, so your brass nozzle, it would chew up. You would need a harder nozzle to do that, so something like steel, stainless steel, whatever it may be. And there are, you would need also a uh, oh, different gear head. cartridge and thermistor because this is printing at higher temperatures. The, yeah, you'll go through, th you'll, put, you'll put an ender into a thermal. Yes, yeah, so... To do this on an Ender 3, is it possible? Yes. Do you have to change things? Yes. Do you have to reflash the firmware? Yes. So with all of those, yes, you can do it. Uh, the, the last part of the problem, which I didn't, I, I had the weirdest experience printing. I'm, I was printing a number of parts for, for this, and the first few millimeters were perfect, and then the rest looked like bed liner. And I reached out to Cron uh, Xander for for those yep. that know him in the 3D printing community, and he's like, "Do you have an enclosure for your printer?" I'm like, "No." He's like, "Get a contractor trash bag, throw it over your printer." And I'm like, "Sure right. enough, <laughs> that was the fix." <laughs> it's it. Well, and it's the thing is, Cron, I, Cron would know, <laughs> um, yes. and another IT guy on top of it yes. too. Yes. Um, that the knowledge, man. If you could just like matrix tap his brain oh oh yeah yeah He's wicked smart guy florida man also uh i i think i've only met him once or twice you know at an event in florida but uh, i've only i've only been um i've only been well i was on uh crump show with you you invited mm -hmm. me on with cron that's the mm -hmm. first time i ever talked to it was, it was oh. you me him and um and garrett oh okay from, uh, oh yeah 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 that yeah garrett's gonna yeah, be mad at me but what a yeah, I bet. I, so, I got some I mean, of his stuff. The, he, he loaned me some of his stuff for the Ghost Gunner, and I haven't returned it yet. Oh, well, that's okay. He has he doesn't answer my email, so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, I mean, th there are some crazy smart people that come up with. I mean, really, a contractor trash bag. I would have been the same thing as, in the same boat as you. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and. It's funny because it, it, you can get a light breeze, and it is amazing how screwed up a print can happen just by because uh, mine is so down low on the bottom of a bench, and just a, my dogs walking by could cool off something just a little bit to give me a bad print. 
Yeah, so I, I've got, you know, this is Florida. I, I have an office ceiling fan, AC vent, all of that can, yeah. can be a factor. Uh, so what Xander calls it exotics, printing exotic filaments. And I, I got to say, I want to print everything in carbon fiber nylon unless there's an explicit reason not to. Just love the stuff. It, well, it's um, funny because, you know, we all learn off the same exact filament and it's like becomes our go-to. Then we come up with something new that we discovered. Um, right. So um, like I print off a pet G and everybody's like, why the hell are you printing off pet G? It's the biggest pain in the ass. It's oh. because I put so much time into tuning that damn Ender three. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to, I'm not going to change my filament. <laughs> I get right. great prints out of it. I'm not going to change it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's like so. Originally, when I was printing um, an AR9 lower, there, so I I remixed uh, somebody's AR9 in the U bolt uh, AR15 okay. into an AR9 U bolt. Stupid amount of years ago, and I was printing that in Pet G in Pet G. <laughs> so the older Pet G, and that's super brittle. I mean, it, it's. Yeah. So the new um, stuff is not the new stuff. Yeah. It, 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 I, I like the pet G because it's got a little bit more flex to it. Um, yeah. The old pet G was, yeah, it was bad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's, no. it's kind of come full circle and I, I think they're doing some pet G and even PLA with uh, either carbon fiber, or different fibers in it. Yeah. And there's, there's people in the community. I, I used to watch uh, on YouTube, Thomas Sandilator. Or, or whatever yep. his name is, we're he's uh, somewhere in North talking. Europe. Yep. But I, I gotta say that I don't know if I trust his results anymore because I watch Hoffman Tactical, uh, Tim Hoffman, and he does a lot of analytical testing, which seemed to, you know, uh, the when when Sandilator and what are, I'm butchering his last name was yeah, I testing. I can't think about it. Yeah, I he was testing the filaments. Pronounce, yeah like carbon fiber nylon and we say in his tests and they may be valid for the time in the filament that he was using at the time he said impregnating with filament uh, um, with fibers did not increase the strength in fact it did the opposite where hoffman tactical is finding the opposite is true that the fibers and maybe they reformulated stuff that it's now effective that's so you, interesting you you know, I think about it, you know, going back, you know, the four or five years since I started, um, you know, everybody was printing out PLA, even in, in the 3D firearms world, everything was PLA. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I went with Pet G, because with PLA, take a Glock frame, put it on, you know, put it on the dashboard of a car in a hot summer. No, it won't it's last. Done. I wanted right. to go with something a little more, temp not, not that Pet G is much better. It's better. It's better. Much yeah. better. Um. But I, I started printing with that. And then, it, you know, I, for me, I haven't been keeping up with the 3D printing world. And then everybody, that, like you're saying, nylon carbon fiber is like the standard for everything now. Oh, Here, yeah. Yeah. Just, and it's like, oh, wow. Um, and I, you know, I started doing, what would it take for me to print that off my Ender 3? I'm like, no, <laughs> that's a new printer. I could well, do it, but why? In and the cool thing about the Ender 3, again, it's open source, unlike the Bamboo P1P. So I, I'm pretty sure somebody like a tool changer head for the Ender 3, so you could have different hot ends. Yeah, like I changed mine to a Micro Swiss all metal hot end mm -hmm, to start mm -hmm. printing because I even played with uh, ABS for a little while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, man, that stuff was nasty. Um, but yeah, it's I had to change to all, all hot. A hall, all metal hot end because of the higher temperatures that I'm going right. to be printing and right. the sustained hot high temperatures. Right. But yeah, you can get parts for it. Um, you can totally you can totally re-engineer this thing. Mm -hmm. But that's what I like. What you're talking about with the bamboos is you don't have to. I mean, by the time I sink all that money, you know, I, when I bought my Ender three, it was on sale for like three hundred dollars. Right. Um, I put a couple hundred dollars into in, into that printer. It's now five hundred dollars. If I now you're telling me for two hundred dollars more than I bought my uh, bought that thing, I'm done. Or I don't have to. When you think about I don't have to bed level upgrades. or anything. 
Oh, oh yeah. gosh. All right. So here's here's my cheat code for bed leveling. And I never understood one it, it seems like a high amount of failure is people can't level a bed. Or really it's called tramming a bed to be accurate. Yeah, to accurate. You know, it's like yeah. magazine clip, tram level. So it's not that big of a deal. And I would typically do it once, and unless I had a crash, you know, a head crash, I would never do it again. And the way I got away with that is because I had a magnetic build plate, and I would peel the build plate off the bed, and then pull the parts off the build plate, and then put it on. Yeah. And and that's the cheat code for not having to bed level. Now, there's also a couple of other problems with bed leveling or tramming. So basically you have these springs on the bed and you have thumb screws that pull them down tighter or looser on the spring. And if yep. you don't rack the bed around, if you just simply peel off the build plate, you're not going to disturb or you disturb it a super minute amount, the bed yeah. level. So you, that that's kind of a cheat code. And I, I still do that because on, on the bamboo P1P, it's easier to pull the, the build plate off and flex it and get the parts off as opposed to, you know, jerking it around and, and trying to get the parts off. The other thing is, unless you're printing on a glass bed, your bed surface is not going to be it's, perfectly I, flat. So, now, I'll tell you, I print on glass off of my mm -hmm. Ender 3. Uh, my Ender 3 came with a glass and a mat. Uh, oh, I print cool. off the glass because the mat, I had the problems with the waviness of the mat. Mm -hmm. Now, my glass is getting old, and I'm starting to notice a, uh, there's there's more peaks and valleys in it over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, I, I just, I, I with that printer, I just print off glass because because of that that level, you know, having it level. Sure. And I cheat a little bit. I use glue stick. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. I always use glue stick. I, I, I use glue stick. I got the the Elmer's purple, you know, the the purple thing that changes colors and all that stuff. It's and I have no problems with adhesion. I have no problems with my first, right. you know, my first rows. If you don't get that thing leveled right, you know, for me, I up another update upgrade to my Ender Three was I upgraded the springs because uh -huh. yes. you know the the spring the springs they got on it they they were crap. And right. you would lose level during uh -huh. a print. Uh -huh. So I had to use stiffer springs. And then I would level, I'll level mine. Every time I fire up my Ender 3, I level it just out of habit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Most times it's perfectly level. Yeah. And and so for people out there that aren't familiar with Core XY and bed slingers like an Ender 3, um, basically the bed only moves vertically. And on a core XY, the head moves head. in two directions. So yeah. that eliminates a lot of the problems. So if you're printing something tall and it, it gets a rocking motion to it, as it gets taller, like just picture, do I have one here? 3D printing a magazine for a gun, the top layers are going to shift more. You're going to have more yep. walking on it. And it, it's not going to come out as good on an Ender 3 because it's slinging the bed back and forth. Yeah. And that so, thing is moving. I mean, if you think about it, when we're talking about movements of a 3D printer, it's very, like, you know, very precise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move here and stop really fast. Right. I'm going to move here and stop really fast. Um, if you start moving that stuff, you, you know, we're talking about a three dimensional space. Sure. Um, yeah, it's it's just like a building. I mean, you know, I was I remember uh, a building here in Helena that I was working in. There was an earthquake in um, in Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. Now it wasn't a huge earthquake. My, my office yeah, now the buildings here are not that tall. Um, my office was up on the fourth floor, the top floor of the building. All of us are like we started feeling the building move. You talk to the people on the first floor, they had no idea that there was an earthquake. Oh, too funny. Mm -hmm. Same thing's happening with your bed. The, the mm -hmm. higher up you get, oh, yeah. the more flex you're going to have. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I mean, this is a steel and concrete building when we were feeling the movement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just imagine so plastic. Let's, say that. let's roll back to the first layer. And and I think this is something I, I used to do a podcast on 3D printing. And one of the guys was like, ah, rafts, no rafts, no this, no that. And I say, yes, asterisk. Um, there's a reason to do a raft. I, do I have it here? There's a part that I print. And if you don't do it with a raft, uh, it's it's for a microcontroller board. Uh, this is a, I can't say the name right. It's R A D X A Raxa uh, Rock Five A, but the Rock Five B is like two thirds larger. And I printed grills, and the grills, if you flip it the other way, and uh, have the grills on top, you know, picture a three sided box. If you have it done down with supports it's just a mess but if you print it on the bed period it's not going to peel off right even on a p1p but if you print it with a raft and then on top it's fine so there's a reason to use a brim like if you print i have a bag of spacers here so let, let's say you print something like this that's going to be vertical you want to print a, a brim around it so it keeps yep. it adhered so it's not just that surface that keeps it on the bed. As the head moves over it, you're just giving it a big a, footprint. Yeah, yeah. Even on a Core XY, where you know you have very little drag from the head on it, like on a on an Ender Three when it's moving like that. Yeah, definitely, you're you're going to want a brim on that. And, and then there's reasons to do a skirt, or like in an Ender Three world, if you do a skirt, that's just to purge the nozzle for the most part, yep. and then you start printing. So there. There's different first layer techniques. Also, in and Jason, you know this, you, you may print something a certain way for strength, but if you printed it oriented another way, it'd have less supports. Okay. So you always have to figure out why. And, and there's a reason to use like tree supports or standard supports or... Yeah. So there's, I don't and, want to say it's for those science, for those that are listening or watching that have never done this, what the reason why you have these supports coming up off the bed, you can't print in thin air. So right. you actually need to print like a little support that comes up that has a flat top. There's, that way you can, you know, it, it, you can print over top of it because you just can't print over air. That's what Rich is talking about there with supports. Yeah, and there there's techniques. So on the P1P, you have the ability to do multi-filament with an AMS, which is the automatic material, what is it, system? I don't know what the AMS stands for. But uh, you could print a water-soluble filament, yep. which is kind of cool. And what Prusa did, so the water-soluble filament's expensive, but what... So if you had a gap this far you had to span and it was all water-soluble filament you're using a lot of it. What Prusa figured out, which I thought was cool, is they printed this part with water-soluble, printed this with a normal filament, and printed that oh, part with oh, water-soluble. Uh, so you, so your, 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 your roof and your floor are yes. the, the water-soluble. Yes. <laughs> that, that, is, that is genius. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, actually genius. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of wicked smart people out there doing really smart things in this community. Um, it, and kind of rolling back, the bamboo, I, I hate to say it, violates a lot of my security parameters. One, it's not open source. Two, you send your G code to China, and then it sends it back to the printer. You can do a direct LAN connection, but you hmm. lose some features. Um, just because I haven't wanted to F with it. And yes, I'm printing guns. And yes, China can have all of my design work. Enjoy. Um, well, the thing is, it's, it, your design work's open source anyway. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I, I do some modification. But again, I, I would have that open source also. So, yeah. 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 It, See, so here's the thing. Like, Jason, you you were saying, like, Oh, you know, I might get a P1P or some form of bamboo, but I'm going to keep my Ender 3. I'm like, you know what? I have one Ender 3. I, I, I sold another one. Uh, I want the Ender 3 because it's it's like totally private. It's open source, yeah, well, totally that's, private. See, I didn't know that about the bamboo, that, uh, about sending your print jobs to it. 
I didn't know yeah, that you can. That, that it was you can doing... bypass it and do a direct to land, but you lose some features. Yeah. Which so so if if the Fed ever if you were going to be a bad guy and the so, Fed said you can't print guns, uh, and bamboo snitched on you, they they have all the evidence. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, is you run into you could run into an issue later where they're saying that you're exporting firearm technology. Ooh, ouch, ouch. Is that an ITAR violation? That would be an ITAR violation, yes. Ouch. Wow. Yeah, and, and some, just being the lazy saying, IT secure, yeah, lazy IT security guy, I have not packet sniffed everything going on here to figure out. Yeah. And, and even worse yet, I haven't put it on a guest network, which there, there's a couple of devices on my net on my home infrastructure here. I probably should throw in a guest network so to keep it keep them separated. Well, what you need to do is, yeah, it's 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 tough. Um, there's so many ways you could do this. So that it's funny because you know, I, as soon as you said sending to China, I, first thing that went through my head was DJI. Ouch. Look what they're doing to DJI with the drones. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, Second, it is apparently, or at least the rumor I've heard is DJI people design the bamboo P1P. Oh, I have not heard that. That's an interesting rumor. So, you know, DJI, look what they're doing to DJI. They're going to eventually, you know, they're, they're flat out, they're flat out trying to ban DJI, the, the drones. So for those of you listening Flying Rich is an actual pilot. I'm a, you know, I'm a part 107, but Rich also has the part 107 to fly the drones as well. Um, uh, actually, I was talking to Rich when he, while he took his part 107 test on the web because it's super easy for him to do because uh, he already has the full the full license. Yeah. Um, but it was funny that you know you think about what they're doing to DJI, and then you say, okay, well, I'm going to get an American made drone. You can't anymore. Um, the last one right. was Skydio, and they cut that off. So now it's oh, like, yeah. okay, what do we do for 3D printing? If they do the same thing with 3D printing, um, boy, that Ender 3 just might just may have become very, very, very um, valuable. valuable. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and knowing how to work on it. So mm -hmm. anyways, uh, uh, that's something to think about is, I don't know, I hate to bring that thing up, especially in an open forum like this, but it might be an ITAR issue. Ouch. Yeah, that, that's I, I didn't really think about that. That's we, scary. Uh, two of us might have to go talk to GOA together at, uh, <laughs> at Shot. Right. Right. <laughs> Ouch. Um, so anyways, be careful. Uh, so now we got, now, now that we had that wonderful panic that the two of us just realized, um, mm -hmm. so now getting involved into the 3d printing community. Okay. It's not everybody wants to be involved in the community. I just want to print something. Um, well, well, let's talk about, you know, downloading the 3d file, right? So we have mm -hmm. these STLs that we download, um, and we do this process called slicing. So it's basically taking this, this model and converting it over so that the 3D printers can basically understand the paths that it's going to move in. Now, I use um, I use Cura. Um, a lot of people hate me because I use Cura. I'm sorry. I'm, it's stupid easy to use. It does the job. What would you what do you look for? Well, you use Bamboo, so you're using their slicer. But I, I did use Cura for uh, the Ender. So, yeah, I, I like Cura. I, I think Cura works really well. And, and the ability to do profiles, it's integration to Octoprint. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it works real good. So when, when people are looking for slicers, what advice do you give them on what to use? I mean... I use I, like I say, you know, especially new 3D printers. I just tell people, just go get Cura. It's just it's I, easy. I would say Cura. So one of the big advantages to Cura was, uh, and, and now I'm going back maybe two years. They were the only one that had tree supports, and tree yes. supports are super cool. 
uh, they use a lot less filament. So what it'll do, it'll uh, like grow basically a cone and then it'll branch off to where it needs support. It, so it's it looks of, like it looks like an old uh, an old apple tree that you would see in Scooby Doo, right? right? In a spooky right. in a spooky forest. Yes, it comes up exactly. in the trunk and then it, it kind of just branches off into these fingers, you know, these branches that go up. Yeah. So it's a very organic looking thing, which is yeah. kind of cool. Um, so, in, and like I said, there there's a reason to use tree supports. There's a reason to use standard supports. There, there I, I did a podcast with a guy who's like, ah, I would never do a raft. And I'm like, yeah, there's a reason for a raft. Yeah, I used to I used to use rafts until I understood bed adhesion because I was learning. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, rafts always worked for me, but um, uh -huh. once I learned bed adhesion, there's very few times I use raft. But like you said, yeah. there are times you just need to use a raft, uh -huh. and if things if things are just not working out, that's 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 where you go. So. So understanding supports when to use them and where to use them is is pretty important. I mean, the, your slicing program generally does a good job at figuring that out for you. So somebody like Hoffman Tactical with his lowers, he's actually designing the supports. So when you print, you print with no supports. The supports are already in in built. Yeah. Yeah, because that's yeah that that I've seen those I've seen those models. I've downloaded one, and yeah, you, uh, that was cool because they did all the work for you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because uh, uh, your slicer doesn't always do a great job at figuring what? that out, and he yeah. just has it figured out for you. And yeah, you just download it and print it. So there. I'm trying to see in the lighting. Like, there's some print here. It says Nylog, and yep. ideally. Uh, like on the Ender 3, I keep moving my finger in the wrong direction. On the Ender 3, it would want to, when you did tree supports, it would want to put supports in all of that. And they have support blockers on, I'm sorry, in Cura, they have support blockers. So you would be able to yeah. say, hey, block doing supports on this part because it doesn't need it. And, uh, and that would, when you have supports like tree supports that go into some text like that it's a nightmare to clean up yeah, so you really need to you know 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 the type of support when to use it not to use it uh and blockers when, it, when it's most effective so and that's what i like about hoffman tactical he's done, he's done that work for you so if you're oh, really yeah. new at least at least until you figure out what's going on he's kind of he's kind of got he's He's got you going in the right direction. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you can start working, you know, forward onto why. Why do we do this? Why? Why is that there? Why did he choose to do that there? Um, that's awesome. Um, I, I totally forgot that he was doing that on his models. Mm -hmm. it tells you how long it's been since I went out and looked at a three D model. I mean, most of the time when I'm three D printing something, uh, it's something simple. Uh, when I did the restoration of the the Winchester ninety four Golden Spike. The the elevator for the site, the rear site, those things are like thirty dollars a piece. Now this is a gun that's never going to fire because it went through a it, it went through a house fire, so it's unsafe uh -huh. to fire the gun. Uh -huh. I'm not going to spend thirty dollars to go buy the thing. I can download a model, three D print it, hit uh -huh. it with some black paint, and pop it into the gun, and I was done. So I had well now like a casing deflector for the AUG. If it was aluminum, they want eighty-five dollars for it. Realistically, yeah. this is under twenty minutes to print in carbon fiber nylon is probably under a dollar's worth of material. Yeah. So, and that's the thing. It, it's funny when you start getting the three D printing, the stuff you can solve. Um, you know, like I had a I had a friend that had like a, uh, you know, a, ta a, a a table for their their deck with a glass top, and there's these like clips that hold the table on the, you know, it was old. So they, they broke. So I ended up printing those for them. And I'm like, uh -huh. Hey, look, these are going to break again. Cause you know, it's not really designed for it, but oh, there you go. You're so, stacking. Yeah. These are equivalent to raspberry Pis, but crazy more uh, compute power and storage. But yeah, the ability to have a cluster of these like this or like the trigger for the org, you can reprint it. 
or you can reprint a semi-auto version of the safety for the org, and you can do a lefty and a right-hand version, so it would be optimized for how you hold the gun. So, and that's it. That's what's so funny is just when you start digging deeper and deeper into three D printing, it, it, you you're like, how am I going to solve this problem? Then all of a sudden, it, it, you go into three D printing mode. Like, I could print that. Like, I um, I have. I'll grab it real quick. Oh, I'm I'm going to step away and grab something also. Okay. So I had a, I had a cleaning kit for um, you know for for a gun, and they have this this thing that goes into the AR receiver, and you know for your um, um, your bore guide right. So it fit into an AR fifteen receiver, and you screwed it into place, and great. So now you can do that. But you also have people like me that also have three hundred eight ARs. Well, now that thing is too big. Are too small. The uh -huh, receiver's uh -huh. bigger. So I went out and designed this. Yep. I just went out, designed this, and and all it is is that thing slides into here. And now this is fits into the AR 10 receiver. Nice. And, and you start thinking about stuff like this. And then this was a long version. And then I well, and I chopped it down for a small version. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. it, when you start looking at a problem you start realizing that um you know i've printed this what's that online cad software tinkercad um, thingiverse tinkercad i did i did this on tinkercad mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I, it, it didn't take me long to design and I'm then a uh, tinkercad expert uh, i'm not an expert at it but uh it's uh I, i'm good enough to make a cylinder <laughs> so i i want to so one of the things that you got to realize is if your only tool is a hammer, you're going to think of everything as a nail. So because right. you can 3D print something doesn't necessarily mean you should. And right. I kind of like combining things. So this is electrical conduit. This is just a wedge. And so if I do product photography or video, my laundry room has a flat panel LED. So it's like a soft box. And I have a dovetail socket under the trim so you can't see it, so my wife can't see it. This is designed so it self-centers and locks in. I 3D printed this ball head. Note that's just a hex bolt with yep. a you know wheel around it. I 3D printed everything, including this phone clamp, so now my phone can just drop in here. Funny. So now when I want to, you know, do product video, I turn on the light, I throw the, the white uh, foam board down, that's my background, slot this in, and boom, I'm doing product photography or video, and it, it's not a big issue, because I used to have to set up my tripod and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's funny, good. Well, just crazy glue on here, and zippy ties, you know, I designed well, this piece to go on with zippy ties. And you're set. It's all that. I'm going to I'm going to zoom out real quick. And for everybody on the uh, on the audio side, I'm sorry. Um, so everybody can kind of see uh, it's a mess in here. Uh, I was filming right because this is my studio, and uh, I was filming back on the bench here. So over here, I have a, a dowel uh -huh. that's coming out. Now I have um, the French cleat system that I designed here. But the yep. problem is, is that with a French cleat system, as it gets farther out, it gets tippy and it can uh -huh. pull out of the French cleat. So right here, you can see it gets really wobbly. Yes. Like that. That block that I'm putting in and out there, I just 3D printed a block. <laughs> and it just, it fits between the top of that and the bottom oh, of the next okay. cleat. So that way, it can't tip. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you see, you start looking at the world differently once you start doing 3D printing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the ability to solve problems. I, 
I mean, I was severely broke and in debt at one point, and my pool vac needed new bearings, and it was like 50 bucks for bearings. Like, let me, I downloaded a bearing and I 3D printed it. Yeah, I resized it or whatever, and, and I 3D printed The bearings lasted like a month. 3D print another one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. That's seriously what I did. <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, if you think about it. You're only using. I mean, I mean, that bearing only probably cost you three cents to make. Yeah. Okay. And you got to you got you know one kilogram or two kil kilogram spool of full filament. You can print a whole lot of bearings before to make that thing break even. Oh, for sure. All right, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's why I printed a, a whole handful. So next time it went bad, I just threw them in a Ziploc bag. So. Here they are when I need them. This is funny. That is so funny. It, um, I guess the, the cool thing, I mean, this is like a Star Trek matter replicator. Like, you know, where you say, hey, I want a steak dinner and it opens up and there's a steak dinner. It's just on a different time scale. So I was, um, you know, at, at a shoot this weekend. And so this has... Uh, a quarter 20 uh, fixture in it. I added that. I put more spring on this and I lengthened this because, you know, the stupid phones in the, you know, hardened cases, cases. that yeah. idiots like me need. I, yeah, I need a bigger. I, I, got, I have otter boxes. Um, yeah, yeah. I have yeah, to put otter thing. boxes. That's the, that's the only way I can get a phone to last is put an otter box right. around it. Well, uh, Rod Mills saw this and he's like, oh, hey. Can you print me one? I'm like, heck yeah, <laughs> I'll print you one up. It, it's it's cool. So so I mean, that, and that's where I want to hit. You know, we've been talking about guns and solving problems. This is way beyond guns, right? I mean, this is everything. There is, you know, I'm looking at my Dylan 650 over there, and there's a project mm -hmm. that I never finished. Oh yeah, all sorts of funnels for loading, you know, uh, it's, powder it's, into cartridges or powder. It's scoops. not even that. It's it's not even that. There's an open source bullet feeder. No way. It's been out there for years. As a matter of fact, uh, I think it's Mr. Bullet Feeder. It, it used to buy their motor and put it into it. And then eventually mm -hmm. they like they got pissed off and sued them. So they went, fine. They redesigned it around a common motor you can get off like Alibaba. Nah. <laughs> And they got around. They got around it, right? All they had to yes. do was just change the mounting system, change the, to match this mm -hmm, other motor, mm -hmm. and it was. And that three D print was back in. I, I never finished it. Uh, it's funny. I just ran into it the other day. Um, actually, I can kind of see it back there mm -hmm. in, the, in the closet. It's cool. You you can solve so many problems that way. And and so the the cool thing is, um, going back to the question, if you can print it, should you? And then the criteria is probably going to be, am I going to want to do revisions of this? Am I going to want to do multiple versions in the future? Is this the most effective way? Could I have done this with a block of wood and some chisels? Yeah, I, I probably could have done this part, but the rest of it, heck no. And if yeah. I was doing this with you know CNC metal or welding, it, it'd be a lot harder. What, what I love about this is I can have an idea. I can click print, go to bed, wake up in the morning, and I have part. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and we're going to eventually get to a point. I, I, I can see we can get to a point where it's almost like we buy a, a 3D printer from like Amazon, right? Uh -huh. And they go on Amazon and buy a design or whatever, right? Sure. And tell Amazon to print it to my 3D printer. Oh, yeah. I'll pay yeah. that. I'll pay that creator. Right. Through like, you know, through this, through this portal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then my parts right there. Oh yeah, yeah. And and so most I'm getting things caught here. Most things I print, like you'll find a neat design, but it won't have a hex recess. Like it has a nut or a bolt on it. Like oh my gosh, you did all the hard work. I'll throw mm -hmm. a hex recess in it. So I, it's a tool free thing, and I don't have to. You know, there's no tools required to do any work with it. I, I think that's one of the cool things about 3D printing is my goal is always to have as few parts. Like this mechanism here, this is totally cool. There's no hardware. You printed everything. 
So yeah. it it's just, you know, this piece, it's three pieces. The the top clamp for the phone and then this threaded uh thumb screw, basically thumb wheel. I mean, really, it, it's it's a screw and a nut you print it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I yep. mean, that that's basically it, in in essence, that's what it is. I mean, so yeah, the, you the only hardware on this is this bolt, and then there's a socket head, you know, a, a Phillips uh, screw right here, and that's it. That's the pivot. So you're looking, so you're looking at twenty five cents at at Home Depot, pretty much. Yeah, crazy, it's crazy, crazy times we live in. Oh yeah, yeah. It it really it it's exciting to me in a way that it, it's like having a food replicator, except you know we're printing stuff or just even things like uh, I'll work out and making the drinks. I made a funnel that goes on the water bottle and fits perfectly. Yeah. So sometimes the powders clump up and it's like you want as wide a mouth as possible yep. and you can design a shoulder in there. So the powder just goes in and it's at the exact diameter of the water bottle. Yeah, it's it, 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 it. And that's the thing is we can go just about anywhere with this. Oh, for sure. Um, for, uh, people I are mean, printing. There's a guy that's printing intake manifolds for cars. God, that's, just, that's crazy thinking about that. Right. Yeah. So he's the. It, I saw it on YouTube. Some guy. I think he's in Europe, in England, and he's three D printing parts for his engine. It 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 does the job, right? I mean, it does the job. I mean, there's 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 so many things that came out like um, Mantis. I love the Mantis system, like the X ten mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Well, the man. When they first came out, they only had so many adapters for guns. Oh, yeah. I 3D like, printed one for the bottom of the magazine on my SIG P365. Yeah, okay. So I did I did it on the P320. They didn't have a P320 mm -hmm. yet. So all I did is I found a P320 um, bottom plate. Yes. And I remixed it with somebody else had a, uh, a pick rail. Yes. Just uh, remixed it. Ding, together, ding, ding, ding. I was Same right thing. back up and running. Because now I could do my holster draw analysis off of my X10. Um, and, and when you think about like the hockey puck blocks for like working on a Glock or a gas block on an AR15, you can download that and print it. Um, I had I just ran into it, which I think it's right here. Um, so this got me a channel strike. <laughs> totally got me a channel strike. Right here, the bench block for for a Glock. I three D printed yes. a bench block for a Glock. What got me the channel strike was the title was three D print Glock bench block. They ah, saw so three D print, print Glock. Glock channel strike taken down, um, fought it, <sighs> lost. Fortunately, another content creator had some contacts, you know, at at um, YouTube. That he's like he printed a tool. And they reviewed it and it got back up. But yeah, so that's a bench block for a Glock. And then, um, there we go. Here's a magazine block for a Glock 43. The 3D print, so I can put this into my, my vice, put a Glock 43 on and then work on it. Nice. Um, yep. Oh yeah, there's so many cool things like that. So many utility. Like even if it's a bin, like to hold bits or casings as you're reloading. Everything. Yeah, everything. Um, yeah, I've three D printed. Uh, I, I I can't even think about all the stuff I three D printed that I did. You know, I mean, it is. It just you you can do you can solve a lot of problems. Now yes. we've been rolling just over an hour. Um, so, Rich, how can people find you? So flyingrich.com has basically my link tree for all of my social media. I'm flying rich on YouTube, flying rich firearms on YouTube. I have two channels running there and flying rich underscore official on Instagram. So if cool. people want to reach, see my content or reach out and talk to me, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Cool. And, and for everybody who wants to be listening, we'll have a link down in the description below. So if you're out driving, you know, commuting to work and you're like, oh, I got to write this stuff down, just come back to the podcast, click on the link and 
we'll get you over to Rich. Now, Rich, I like to loosen up at the end of my podcast. So we're going to play a little game. Okay. And it's just going to be a speed round, which oddly enough, speed rounds sometimes add 20 minutes to the podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's going to be four this or that question. And then one thinking question, which is obviously not a speed round question, but it's fun to think about. So for pistol, nine millimeter or 45? Ooh, ouch. I'm in both worlds. Uh, I'm most I know. Accurate. That's, why, that's why I chose that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I have an SR-45 that I'm crazy accurate with, but because in Florida we can only conceal carry, I carry a Sig P365. Okay. Uh, 60, 365 is definitely in my rotation. I was looking around. It's upstairs. Uh, uh, 365 is in my rotation of very many of my carry guns. Uh, it's a great gun. It's a really, mm -hmm. I, I like it. Um, so for rifle, 223 or 308? Mm. Mm. I, I kind of like 308, and I have a kel RFB. Oh, nice. Nice. So 308, and of course, I got the bullpup fetish going on. Yeah, you do have that bull. It's funny. I, I Watching you do that whole bullpup stuff going, I was just like, I, it makes me want to get back into 3D printing so bad. It's like I've got so many other things I don't have time for. I mean, oh, I don't even sure. have time to create content every week anymore. But it's Correct. just like, God, I just want to get back into 3D printing so bad. All right, so um, let's see here. So we talked a little bit about this offline because we were talking about hearing loss. Earplugs or earmuffs? Um, so I've got like three answers to that. If I'm shooting rifle, I'm going to do the foamies in and then the uh, – I actually have the cheapy – like $20, $30 noise-canceling headsets. And the reason you can get a better headset, you turn the volume up, so then even though you have the foamies in your ear, you can hear people talking to you pretty reasonably, but you get double hearing protection. Also, with hearing protection, you got to watch out with, like, hats and glass, glasses because yeah, you're opening up the ear cup. Yeah. So you got to be careful how you wear them. Now, if I'm shooting pistol, I have molded, you know, custom molded plugs, and and that's good enough for pistol, unless unless it's this pistol. <laughs> yeah, that, this, this pistol is louder than the fifty BMG. Yeah, that's uh, it's what is that? A six inch barrel on that thing? Six, four, four. Okay. <laughs> I was at, I was adding the extension into that measurement. <laughs> no, I, I um, think this is a total of like 14 and a half inches from end of the buffer to end of the barrel. We actually cut the threads off to oh, take wow. it from four and a half to four. <laughs> so for everybody on the audio side, he's holding up an AR pistol. Um, and it's it's short. <laughs> 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 it's short, no doubt. Um, let's see here. Um, what's going to be our last question? Let me think. Uh, I was going to ask something 3D printing, but I, you know what? I'm going to ask this instead. Would you rather reload ammo or clean a gun? I, I love the idea of reloading ammo because it's cool. I don't have a reloading setup. I've been saving my brass. Uh, but I, I would say clean a gun because um, I don't have experience reloading ammo and I know how to clean a gun. What if you had, what if you knew how to clean, how to reload ammo and you had the gear? I, I mean, I, I think it'd be cool. I, and I, Reloading ammo, I like what I used to do, home improvement contracting. I liked a day painting because it was a mindless activity and I yep. could just, you know, listen See, to music and, and whatever. And that's the thing is like like for me, when I sit down, I sit down at my, my 650, I mean, it, it, you, get into, you get into a rhythm mm -hmm. and you get some music going on and mm -hmm. it, it, everything else, there's nothing else that, that exists around you because it's yes. – it's, it's pull, push, you know, pull the bullet on, pull, mm -hmm. push, 
put a bullet, and that's all you're doing other than right. feeding primers. And I got a yeah. brass feeder, so um, and if I get a bullet feeder, I'd be really that'd be really awesome, right? But yeah, no, there's certain things, there's certain things about um, working on guns that are. I don't want to say soothing, but they kind of they kind of are, right? It's just like everything else is just gone. Yeah. Just... So I think you can connect with this because a lot of what I do, my day gig, is I can't even explain to IT people. Most IT people don't even understand what I do. Yeah. And my professional career has either been software development or now it's virtualization. And it's dramatically important to me to do things in the physical world that people can see and understand or i can say i made that as opposed to try and explain you know vmware clusters and failover high availability and it, yeah you know. it's been, you know, i was looking for it um oh, it's right here um like yesterday i got done work i'm working on a video series i i like i like doing Build videos. I yesterday I was in my circuit booth, laying down circuit on the lower. Nice for a video series. Um, and hint, hint. This is uh, this is a lower that. Uh, let's just say the making of it can't be on YouTube. Right, right. And where would that be? Where would we find information like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. So this is. Uh, I mean, and it's 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 soothing. It does. It, it, it I can get away from things. Um, mm -hmm. I like I like using my hands. I, I'm not, you know, like you. I'm, I I I do. I use my mind all day. Still use my mind, but sometimes it's just great to do something with your hands. And oh, which yeah, is why yeah. I and, like building and, like, and rehabbing guns. I already had a fourteen hundred dollar NATO org. There's no reason I needed this but it sounded cool i wanted to do it it's a challenge and the interesting thing is well i thought i knew how the org worked going through you building so this doing modifications on it troubleshooting the issues i now really understand thoroughly yeah. how this thing works and the cool thing is i recorded a video hopefully i got enough detail and it will be on freedom crew university in the future Awesome. That's so cool. Um, that and and yes, Rich and I knew each other before Freedom Crew University. Um, but it, it's great it, for those of you out there who don't know what Freedom Crew University is. It's the place where we can put our videos that have gotten taken down or that will not be able to exist on a certain platform that you you might be watching this video on. Um, and this. And I already know already this this podcast is just not going to be monetized because we talked about way too much uh, evil <laughs> stuff. So I'm not even I'm not even going to try to monetize this one, but it's a, it's a great podcast and something to, to talk about. So I see I told you the speed round usually adds about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so for your final question, this is the thinking question. I'm going to take you to the world's largest armory, and in this armory is one of Anything that has ever thrown a projectile, anything from Dennis the Menace's slingshot up to the deck guns off the Missouri, and it's been wow. it's been cleared by every possible government agency in the world, in the world, that you get to walk off with one of anything in this armory. What are you walking off with? Is an Iowa class battleship in there, or just the gun? No, just the gun. However, now I will tell you, I will tell you, the battleship may have to be in there because twice, and, and I know everybody watching the podcast is a little sick of hearing about this one, um, twice the GAL-8 has been chosen. The GAL-8 is the Gatling gun on the front of the A-10 Warhawk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one person is a pilot, and he figured that I had to give him the aircraft since the aircraft was basically built around the gun, and it's the fire control for the gun. <laughs> so, I, I considering that we had to give him the aircraft, I'm guessing that we're going to have to give you the battleship too. Yes. 
I don't know where you're going to park it, but it, 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 it's, it's the other thing is, but you only get the battleship with one gun. The other guns yeah. are gone. So it's yeah. kind of so there, there's a couple of, um, I, I, I gotta say, God bless Richard Hoffman who passed. He built, yes. um, I miss, I miss being on podcasts with him, being on panels and stuff. Oh Rich, God. So for, the, for, for everybody that, that has not seen me on other podcasts, it, it gets really interesting seeing me in, on someone else's shows. And when Hoff and I were on, um, when we would make appearances on other people's shows, it was automatically a demonetization alert. The two of us would get, we would oh get talking gosh. about stuff and we would kill the monetization on that thing. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're a content creator, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't, um, well, sorry, it, it's too too much to discuss. But yeah, when, when, when Hoff and I used to get going, the stuff that would come out of our heads, even, the, it, it, even Crump would just be like, God, <laughs> so start shaking his head. Richard designed what he called the Katsar Uzi. So I think it was smaller than a micro Uzi, and he said it was good for clearing phone booths. It fired so fast. Um, so that the, let, let me give you my short list. Okay. I love the most Nagant because it has too few parts to operate, but does. I love the Luger because it's the opposite. It has too many parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're you're talking close to the same time period. The uh, a deck gun on an Iowa class battleship. There is nothing as as you know somebody that voted for Reagan the first time he got to vote better than a ship sitting twenty miles over the horizon, lobbing yes. two thousand pound projectiles. 24-7. Yeah, lobbying. Uh, basically, they're lobbying VW bugs uh, over the over the over the horizon. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, that that's that's just exciting. Like, that, like no drones, no airplane, no bombers, no cruise missiles. No, you're talking about something that's crazy. The F cost effective. Yeah, putting warheads uh, on foreheads. And that's the thing is, like, for me, uh, I've been through the USS New Jersey over in Camden, uh, New Jersey. And it it's amazing walking through that ship, knowing what that ship did in Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just just thinking about and you And I did the firepower tour, so we got to go up into the turrets and stuff like that. And it's just like, oh, cool. You're just like, wow, this is how... How, right? I mean, this is something that was designed for World War II that was in modern battles. There was still dropping shells in with pinpoint accuracy. Oh, and then, yeah. of course, yeah. then then they then they had the missiles they put on top too. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with you. It's it, there's just the, the the awe of of those guns. I can just imagine just imagine those things going off. It, and we, you know, during Reagan, we were twenty four seven bombing Libya with an Iowa yeah. class battleship. You're you're talking, you know, ancient, ancient yeah. technology. But it worked, and, and that that was just I I would say definitely the eight inch deck gun. Yeah, no, I it, it's impressive. It's it's totally impressive. So. Well, Rich, man, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your day today to join us. It's you know, it's it's midday here, and uh, I really appreciate you just taking a little little detour from your day job. <laughs> Thanks, buddy, and, and always good seeing you. Always good talking. We, if, for those that don't know, Jason and I get on the phone, and we're like two little girls talking for hours. <laughs> we are. Well, it's funny because a lot of people that come on the podcast say the exact same thing. When I get on the phone, the two of us talk forever. Rich and I will. We'll just pick up the phone just just to go. Hey, man, it's been a while since I've heard from you. And then two hours later, we're like, "Oh crap, we got I gotta go." Yeah, it's like <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going to be cool is that um, uh, we're go you're going to we're going to be in the same house. We're sharing the same house for Shot Show, yes. so that'll be interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I felt bad because like last year at Shot Show, I had so many things to do. It's like, hey, Rich, yeah, we were gonna we were gonna go around together, and then I like I was like gone. Oh and yeah, at the end of the day, I'm like. 
oh crap, I just totally left him in the media room. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You you were a shot show veteran, and you were gonna you know bring me around. I, I, I felt so ba- I felt so bad about that because like all of a sudden I got like this like this invite to go talk to somebody at their booth. I'm like I, I'm just like gone, and at the end of the day I'm like. Yeah, that's how it is. That, that's how when, when you get a bunch of gun people together from the gun community, even even something a small event like Iraq Veteran, like people that I know, it's like I had a chance to high five and walk by. You know, it, yeah. it it's there's it's like a feeding frenzy. Yep. Totally. Totally. Well, man, well, it's time to get back to reality. Uh, mm-hmm. and thank you so much for talking 3D printing. And uh, and, and I'm sure that Michelle is going to be so mad at me now because now I'm, now I'm going to have to add a new 3D printer to all the other crap that I want. Yes. I just got to figure out how to get it onto the need list. Because <laughs> you have the wants and the needs. I oh. just got to figure out how to get it onto the needs list. Look, look I told you know the guys from Gear Report, uh, Jeff, I'm like, dude, Mow lawns, rake leaves to get the money yeah, to buy the printer. Don't yeah. buy anything else. He didn't. Yeah. I'll have to do that. So, all right, man. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining. And Rich, thanks again for taking time out of your day to talk to us. Thank you. I've known Rich for a few years. He's a really, really cool guy. And when he got into this really big into 3D printing, I'm the honest man. I'm jealous about the work that he's done. Uh, definitely, you know, I mean, you heard us talk about printing, and um, I really, really want to get one of those bamboos because it's kind of like the easy button for 3D printing. You know, my Ender 3, I love it. I still use it, but I got to fiddle with it every time I want to print. It'd be nice to have something I don't have to mess with that much, but yet have so much flexibility. Definitely go check out Flying Rich. Got all the links down below. If you like the work that I do here, please consider supporting me for free by shopping my affiliate links and banners at www.trb.fyi. If you go over to the partners and discounts, you click there. It'll take you over to that. Like if you're going to go to Brownells, click there. Take you right over to Brownells. Do your shopping. And a small portion of your purchase will come back to me to help me build additional content that you want to listen to or watch to depend on where you're watching or listening to this podcast. The greatest thing is not going to cost you one penny more than you were already going to spend. That's right. You're going to support the channel for free. And sometimes I got discount codes out there so I can even save you money helping me bring you the content that you're looking for. Now for the product of the podcast, I love the scope mounting and bore sighting kit from Real Avid. Real Avid's got some great stuff out there. They got some great stuff coming up, but this thing is pretty freaking awesome. I mean, we're used to putting levels on things and you know leveling turrets, but what happens if our turrets are not quite level? This levels off the reticle. So that way your reticle is level, to your bore, super cool idea. And you get to use this flashlight, it's super cool. I got got a video for this thing. And you shoot a flashlight through the front and then you have a chart that you're twisting that that scope to make sure that your reticles are level. Super cool product, the link down below. And if you use the checkout code RARB24, it can save you 10% there. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, click that video right there. That video is, well, right now, the most popular video on my YouTube channel. It's how to reassemble a Glock Gen 3. Everybody else, there's a link down below. Thanks for listening. Hope you're staying safe out there. Look forward to talking to you again soon.